in the 1940s, 50s, and early 60s was about the immediacy of the canvas surface which held the moment of truth. Each artist was involved and believed he or she could do anything. It was simply the urge to express oneself. Abstract painting is a mental language. The figure is a physical language. Abstract painting has the potential to reveal the artist's inner world, while at the same time referring to images and objects from the world around us. It activates the sensitive viewer's intellect and imagination, conjuring up memories, associations, and questions. It can be simultaneously appealing and challenging, sublime and very earthly, very present. Some of the work you're about to see by William Gambini was done nearly 40 years ago, and others only yesterday and today.
Soon after arriving here in San Diego with his family from Woodstock, New York, William Gambini was walking here in the Sculpture Garden in Balboa Park, viewing the works of Calder, Nevelson, and Henry Moore when he recognized this work done by Saul Bazerman. It's called Sonata Primitiva. Gambini was perhaps the only assistant Bazerman ever had when it was created between 1949 and 1951. Before his association with Bazerman and the abstract expressionist movement in Greenwich Village, William Gambini took a job in South America after returning home from World War II. After returning home from the war, I was very anxious to get to my painting and continue my work. I um, would go to Washington Square Park with my sketch pad and sit on a familiar bench and try to draw. When I would return to my workspace to look at my canvas on the easel, to see what progress I had made, I realized that I just could not get started in my painting. I um, began to realize and decide that perhaps a more primitive culture, way of life, would be better at this time and to get away from civilization. And uh, later, I had a uh, contract from Mobile Oil to do seismograph work in the interior of Venezuela.
Uh, the work was very interesting and also fascinating. And uh, I began to feel pretty much like myself. And uh, I started to do some drawings. I also did some watercolors. And of course, the climate, the light was a steady light almost every day and perfect for my uh, sensibilities and uh, the watercolors that I was doing, as well as many of the portraits I did of the natives and also of the uh, group that I was working with. Uh, all in all, it uh, seemed to add up to the idea that I had of leaving civilization and coming into more of a primitive life and sort of come back to a, you might say, a rebirth of myself and uh, my work. Back in New York, he continued his painting career and was called one of the inheritors of the abstract expressionist movement by writer and critic Harold Rosenberg. His name appeared in both the New York Times and Village Voice, among numerous books and articles written about the movement. When I uh, returned to Greenwich Village, I uh, decided that I would uh, apply for my GI Bill. And uh, after I received my GI Bill, I decided that I would like to study fresco painting and I selected the school of Esmeralda in Mexico City and there I did a uh, fresco, my first fresco, which was a wall 11 feet by uh, 12 feet and uh, Diego Rivera happened to come into the school one day and he looked at my work and responded and asked me if I would uh, like to assist him at the palace building and also the new university that he was starting a new mural. And of course, I had respect for Diego Rivera and uh, I was very pleased and uh, regarded this as a great opportunity to learn a few more things from a master. After leaving Mexico City, I returned to Greenwich Village and there I became quite involved with the abstract expressionism and also the uh, 10th Street Cooperative Movement where um, things began to happen, especially with the uptown Madison Avenue dealers and uh, 10th Street became a showcase for any of the dealers to select artists. I was approached uh, a number of times by dealers that if I would uh, slick up my work a little bit, I could be a winner. But of course, most of us were really losers on the basis that we were concerned with the dream and also the uh, ancients, the primitive, the caveman, and uh, the aboriginal, and not the millionaire.
After the death of Franz Klein in May of 1962, the abstract expressionist movement began to lose its spirit. Although Gambini was selling paintings from his studio in Greenwich Village, he and his wife Peg decided to move to Woodstock, where he continued to paint and develop his work without any other involvement or influences. Woodstock provided a good atmosphere in which to raise a family. I met Peg and we were married in 1957 and pretty soon we had Vittorio and Elizabeth and uh, I found myself not alone and pushing a baby carriage alongside of Bill de Kooning with his daughter Lisa who was approximately the same age that Vittorio was. And uh, Peg and I were starting to wonder if New York City was really a place to raise a family. And we started to look elsewhere and uh, decided that Woodstock could be a possibility to raise a family. We uh, found Woodstock to be a country place, relaxed, and uh, good for Vittorio and Elizabeth. And we were there for approximately about 11 years when things started to change. And uh, with the um, grant that I received, uh, the Mark Rothko grant, with that money, we um, decided to go to San Diego, California, in which we uh, did in 1975 and uh, like it very much. About 10 years ago, I was visiting my brother-in-law in, in uh, Houston, Texas. He's a pastor there. And we had gone to uh, two or three art museums. And in the area of the art museum, uh, there was a chapel called Mark Rothko Chapel. Um, when I saw that building, uh, uh, I was attracted by the external of the building. Uh, but also, uh, I said, what, what is this? And so we walked inside, and uh, we saw the paintings of Mark Rothko. It is, uh, it is a very awe-inspiring uh, chapel. The paintings inside of the chapel are abstract art. As you uh, sit, and it's basically people are silent as they enter into this place, as you sit, and I spent about an hour the day that I was there, uh, there is just something, uh, the word I would use is spiritual, that begins to move you uh, to a new place. Uh, when we met uh, William Gambini in San Diego, he and his wife had come to visit our church, and uh, we had uh, made a nice relationship, and he and Peg invited my wife and I to visit him uh, at his studio. Uh, and so one afternoon we went to, to visit, and uh, we, we loved the studio, uh, not only the hospitality that he brought to us, but also uh, the many paintings, in fact, uh, actually uh, pulled out some paintings that he has done over the time and showed us. One of the paintings I was particularly struck by um, was the uh, crucifixion uh, painting that he had. In fact, at one time brought the painting up to my office and I had that painting in my office for uh, about, oh, maybe a month. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a very attractive, moving, uh, beautiful painting. At the time, uh, we were uh, doing some remodeling in our church, and one of the things that we talked about is having some art as one enters the church uh, right on a wall that we have as you uh, would come into the narthex. Uh, we talked, I talked with William about that. He said that he would be willing to do that. We went through the steps with our church council, and, and they were uh, very excited about the possibility. And so William and I talked. Um, maybe a half hour, an hour, uh, on the ideas of, of what we were talking about. One of the things that we wanted to do uh, would be uh, to have four different colors that would be symbolic of the 
poor seasons of our church year. So as you come walking into our church now, we have these four wonderful uh, paintings of uh, four different colors, symbolic of our church year, uh, which I think is a real inspiration, uh, probably more unconsciously as people uh, enter, into our, uh, in, enter into our sanctuary. About the past 15 years, we've talked about doing new building downtown. We have about a half a block here. And uh, one of the things that we would like to do is to build not necessarily a huge high rise, but a high rise where the sanctuary of our church would be on the first floor. Uh, and uh, when William finished uh, the commission on the paintings that we had him do, I also said, I'd certainly like to have you think about uh, it, when we in the future do a new building, we'd like to have you think about uh, commissioning uh, and doing some more artwork for us, which he said that he would be happy to do. So we look for that, uh, look forward to that future, not only of our building new sanctuary, but also to the art that uh, William would do for us. When I was 16, I walked across the Brooklyn Bridge to Greenwich Village. I have been developing my painting ever since. Art needs to come from somewhere to forge ahead. And there is no turning back. That's what painting is all about. 